Do you have a paranormal encounter you'd like to share with us? Send us an email with your story for a chance of it being featured on Weird World. Wairika in Oklahoma, United States is a tiny town with a huge reputation for paranormal occurrences. Weird World viewer Katie Bennett has sent an astonishing account of her bizarre time slip experience in the town. Katie says that until now she has been in two minds about relating her story for fear that she might be seen as a bit unhinged. After hearing another time slip story on our channel, which also took place in Oklahoma, she decided to share her experience with other viewers. In 2015, she decided to catch up with a friend in Cache, Oklahoma, who invited her to visit as they had not seen each other since high school in the 1980s. They agreed to meet up, but the trip would be a long drive as Katie was coming from Graham, Texas. She packed some clothing and provisions, typed in the address on her GPS and left Graham, Texas at around 4.30 one afternoon in March of 2015. Katie started out on the Texas 380 highway going east, then proceeded to Texas 281 and 287. By then it was close to 6pm and getting dark. A very thick fog suddenly appeared on Highway 81, the fog so thick that she could barely see two feet ahead. Straining her eyes trying to see, she pulled over to the shoulder in a town called Ryan, Oklahoma. But after several minutes, with the fog still lingering, she decided to go further in the hope that it would dissipate. It didn't, so she made it past Ryan and into the next town, which was Wairika. As she entered the out-of-way town, the fog began to lift and she could see Main Street. Soon, she could see towards the end of Main Street, where stood a building that looked like it had a bell tower and had City Hall written at the top of it. Strangely, the cars parked on the sides of the street were vintage cars from the late 50s and early 60s, so Katie thought there must have been a car show earlier that day. At the end of the street and to the left, as she drove north towards the City Hall building, was a three-storey brick building marked Steward Hotel at the top. Over to the right were other buildings, one of them a walk-in theatre called The Empress, and next door a cafe called Wanda's Cafe. Katie decided to park her car, get out and stretch, and have a cup of coffee at Wanda's Cafe, which had the address 113 North Main. Wanda's Cafe was like a 1950s cafe with booths and a few tables and bar stools. A server greeted Katie and asked if she was the only one, to which she said yes. She seated Katie and gave her a menu which looked to her like drive-in food. Feeling hungry and tired, she thought nothing of it and didn't even look at the prices, whilst also thinking that the food options seemed very outdated. However, when her meal arrived, it was a generous serve, fresh and tasty. Katie assumed Wanda's Cafe was a themed 50s and 60s cafe, where the music playing was by Elvis Presley, Jerry Lee Lewis, Chubby Checker, Fats Domino, The Righteous Brothers, The Four Tops and The Beatles. The server asked Katie if she was from out of town, to which she answered yes and that she really needed a place to stay the night. The server suggested that Katie stay at the Steward Hotel and gave her directions to it. She said that it was a little old-fashioned, but very comfortable. Katie commented on the vintage cars in the street, saying something to the effect of, wow, people around here love older cars, huh? The server then had a puzzled look on her face. She said, well, some people drive new cars, but most people drive older cars. She said her mother still drives a 53 Chevrolet, and Katie commented, wow, that's really old. She looked puzzled again and said, okay, and that her mother loved that car and has had it since she bought it new, 15 years ago. Katie asked how she had bought it new, 15 years ago, and the woman again looked puzzled, then said that she got lucky and got a good deal from the dealership. Feeling very satisfied with her meal, Katie told the server she was ready to pay and head out. When the server gave her the bill, she was shocked to see that it was $1.37. 
Thinking that couldn't be right, she called the woman back to her table and told her that she thought she had made an error. The woman said, oh, let me check, then sat down beside Katie and added it up. Everything Katie had ordered was priced between 25 and 40 cents. Feeling shocked and quite confused, she just agreed to pay and left a $5 tip. The woman was very happy with the tip and told her to come back any time. Katie left the cafe and drove to the Steward Hotel. The glass front doors were open, so she walked into the hotel lobby, which had old-time decor and furniture that reminded Katie of a bank lobby from the 1930s. The night clerk had auburn-coloured hair up in a bun and wore a blue business suit, appearing to be in her late 50s or early 60s. She asked Katie if she wanted a room, to which she said yes, a single. She told Katie the price, but as she was feeling exhausted, she didn't catch it. She informed the clerk that she had a credit card and was told that they only took cash. Katie had used her cash at Wanda's Cafe and only had a debit and credit card, so she asked where she could find an ATM. The clerk replied, I don't know what you mean. Katie then said, OK, where's the nearest bank? And she replied, Farmer's National Bank is the nearest bank, but they're closed for the evening. Katie told the woman she would be right back and, feeling frustrated, got into her car and drove around looking for an ATM machine. Even more frustratingly, as soon as she drove past Main Street, the fog was back again and very thick. She drove around for another 15 minutes looking for an ATM but couldn't see because of the fog. Finally, Katie gave up and decided to just sleep in her car. She drove back to the hotel and parked her car outside. The fog eventually lifted as she fell asleep, but when she awoke, the three-story building she was parked in front of was gone. The steward hotel had vanished, replaced by a vacant block of gravel and grass. To the north was a courthouse, but the city hall building with the bell tower was also gone. Katie thought she must have parked on the wrong street, and then drove down several streets trying to find the steward hotel. The sun was just starting to come up when she stopped at a convenience store and asked if they could tell her how to get to the steward hotel. The young man behind the counter asked the what hotel? She repeated the steward hotel, the three-story brick building hotel. Again, the man just had a lost expression on his face and had no idea what she was talking about. An older man walked in and the guy behind the counter asked if he knew where the steward hotel was. The old man laughed and said, it's probably in hell. He said that hotel burned down in 1975. Katie now asked about the old city hall building that stood in the middle of Main Street. And the older man said that that building had been torn down in the late 1970s to make room for Highway 5. Shocked and horrified, she left the convenience store, then drove down Main Street once again and also noticed that the Empress Theatre was gone. In its place was a vacant space and Wanda's cafe was also gone, in its place now an abandoned building. Katie said she felt sick, it was as if she had imagined everything. Wondering how her experience could have happened, the only explanation that she could rationally come up with was that somehow she had slipped back in time to Warika in the 1960s. She felt very disoriented and lightheaded after this experience, and while she did eventually make it to her friend's house in cash, vows she will never take that route again. She has since done research about the town's buildings that she observed. She found old pictures of the City Hall building and recalls that during her time slip experience, the City Hall building had fire trucks parked near it. Her research confirmed that it had been converted into a fire department in the early 1960s, although still bearing the word City Hall at the top and its bell tower. She later learned that the Empress Theatre burned down in 1982, with the last movie shown there in May of 1971. She recently heard that the Wanda's Cafe building is now a farmer's insurance branch. 
She was unable to find a photo of Wanda's cafe, but did confirm it had been located at 113 North Main from 1963 to 1969 and had gone out of business in 1970. Until now, Katie has told no one other than two family members about her unnerving time slip occurrence. She wonders if any viewers can explain her experience while also having heard that there are several other unexplainable paranormal events that have happened in Warika, Oklahoma. Watch out for a future Weird World video on these.